Next slide. Is, and it's a not-for-profit association based in Western Australia. Um, we're looking at our computer simulation is to demonstrate how electricity demand in the Southwest Interconnected System, which is the main utility network for the Southwest of Western Australia, can be met using renewables and to enable people to explore the potential of using renewable energy, station storage, transmission, etc. Next. Excellent. Yeah, okay. So the simulation requirements we see is to demonstrate to policy makers, politicians and the public that optimal renewable energy scenarios are economic now. And we see six requirements for the simulation. One is robust models to model technology. Two is a map covering the area of, of interest for the electricity network, weather data for the area and time frame of interest. Details on the electricity network, a relatively simple interface, picking up the point that Joseph mentioned about the huge number of variables that are possible, and potential for a wider application with free and open availability of the actual model. Next. Next slide. Yeah, okay. So the robust models and really SAMs validated technology models are the key to the simulation. Similar to the last two presentations, we use API calls to the SAM simulation call to invoke the appropriate SAM module for each of the renewable energy stations and produce a composite result for generation financing costs. At the moment, the technology models that we're looking at is PV watts, TCS molten salt, wind power, and probably biomass in the near future. And the financial models is basically we're looking at a utility scale, so it's really the utility model. Next. A map, pretty well any suitable geographic image. Um, we're using MapQuest, which is an open source set of tiles. The large map that you can see on your screen is the area of the Swiss. As I mentioned, it's about 100,000 square miles. So it's about the same size and area as Colorado. And you can just brief, sort of lightly see the actual, the yellow and etc. colored lines are the main um, transmission lines for the grid. It's a fairly large skinny network and about 90% of its load is centered in, around Perth which is where those lines lead to in about the middle of the map, slightly to the left. Um, and the way that we, we use is we can basically download map tiles from OpenQuest and basically produce a, a single map or graphic for the whole image. Next slide. The other thing is, is getting weather data that, if you have weather data that reflects actual conditions rather than the typical meteorological year, then you can have any model will better actually map to load, so load demand. For example, hot weather will increase air conditioning load, hence increase the load on the network. So if you see that you've got hot weather, then the load should sort of also reflect that. So we're actually using NASA, NASA of some realized satellite data going back from the 1990s to the present day. And it has a worldwide grid that's about half a degree of latitude by two thirds of a degree longitude, which for our area is about squares that are about 34 miles by 34 miles. We manipulate that data into forms that are suitable for SAM. So the WIM data is basically just taking the appropriate parameters out of the NASA data and creating a SRW format file. The solar data, we're relying on a single radiation field. There's a couple of um, calculations or calculators that NANRAL have produced, and from those we can generate the variables required for solar weather files using .SMW format files. So pretty well you can take NASA data for any area of the globe and generate weather files. Next slide. 
next. And the fourth thing we need is the existing electricity network. As I mentioned, our focus initially is a southwest interconnected system. Um, the independent market operator for us has publicly available data, details on the existing generators, which is predominantly fossil, but we do have some wind and PV, load data for the network, and detailed generation data for each generator on the network. We can compare calculated renewable generation to actual load. So if you have a look at this small graph on the left, the top black line represents the load for the first week of 2014, and the dark green, which is the sort of next highest graph, is potential renewable generation from a simulated um, scenario of, of existing stations plus additional. So you can see there's predominance of, of solar with the, the little peaks during the middle of the day. The right hand graph is just showing the annual summary. So the black line that goes fairly flat across the middle of the screen is the actual average load demand over the year. And the peaks are what time of the day that the renewable scenario that we've been developing will meet that demand. So you've got lots of sort of over, over generation of solar during the day and a shortage of generation sort of at the other times of the day. Next slide. So how does using SAM and the, and the NASA data compare to reality? We've correlated using the SCADA data that we've got available. So it's correlated actual um, generation from each of the of the um, renewable energy stations versus what SAM would calculate, and the correlations vary from about 0.7 to about 0.95. So for the sake of what we're doing, it's a pretty reasonable correlation and validates the use of the SAM modules and the NASA, NASA data. Um, the large graph on the left is showing cumulative generation from the total renewables and then the dotted line, which almost parallels it, is what SAM is calculating. The other four smaller graphs are showing, again, that first one, which is the total generation. And then the other three graphs are for the different renewable energy stations at different capacities. So the top right is the larger ones and so on and so on, just so you can visualize. It's really just a visual picture to show how close the calculated um, generation compares to actual real generation, which is pretty reasonable for, for what we're doing, which is a conceptual model. Next slide. And finally, a simple interface. So we have the map that we saw. Um, novice users requires no detailed input of all the SAM variables. If you can read that one is what you edit a station, we've got a name, the technology, where it's located, which you can do locate on the map, how big it is and what the turbine is, are essentially the only inputs that you need. Um, with the export model, all the SAM variables available. The approach that we've done is you just create a spreadsheet that has all of the variables that are required for each of the SAM models. And for most of those, you have the default, default variable set. There's a few that you require input, such as the, um, the wind file and the size of the station. And the, our simulation will read the spreadsheet for the defaults and apply the few extra variables that um, are there. For an expert, he can basically essentially replace all of the values in the spreadsheet with what he would like. So you can essentially provide as much detail and as much input as you want. It's fairly easy to add new generation just by pointing to a location on the map and say, I want to add, for example, a wind station at this point. You can save and reload scenarios. So you may have a set of scenarios of developing where you want um, solar thermal stations and wind stations, save those for later analysis. And you run the simulation and produce extensive graphic and tabular output to enable. It's really analyze how the 
scenario in which the load and what costs are involved. And you can also simulate load growth into the future. Next slide. This is an example of usage. Um, that's probably closer to where you folk are than me. Um, so that area is actually um, Colorado. The red lines is a, is a network graph that I managed to grab from somewhere. And the blue thing is an example of a wind, wind farm near Golden. Um, if you can read the screen, it says basically you click right click on the map and you can choose all those options for any, any station. So you can run the power model to a particular station. You can copy it, create another one, um, delete it, that sort of stuff. Edit the details for it, create a new station. Edit the grid line if you don't want it to follow where it might, might go. You can sort of draw a grid line to go wherever you want and um, show details like that. So that's just demonstrating that you can pretty well pick any, any area of the world. And if at the top I can, there's options, I can basically run the power model for all of the SAM, for all of the stations that I may have in my simulated network. It'll go and process the appropriate SAM um, power model, for want of a better word. And then you can say, I also want to do the financials, and then it will pass that data individually to get the financial details for each um, station and then project, present a, a total that sums all of them. Next slide. And finally is to provide wider and open application. So most of the data sources that we're using are public available. The SAM itself, as I said, it's pretty the key part of the, the um, the module, the simulation, maps. Um, you can provide any map, but um, OpenStreetMaps provides map tiles sort of worldwide. The mass NASA mirror data covers all of the globe. And the, the network details is probably the stuff that is where you may or may not have good data. We're pretty fortunate that our local network provider provides good data, and um, other places will be different. It's being developed to support any geographic area, so you just choose, I'm interested in doing an analysis for this area, um, download the map and the appropriate weather data, um, developing open source products, so we're using Python to do the development with all its extensive range of libraries and will produce package binaries for those people who don't want to install, install the software. And finally, it will be licensed under the new the open source licensing. Next slide. So for further development, our focus is likely to remain utility style. First, we'll finish the initial development. Um, look at other technology models that are suitable for initially for us will be biomass. Um, the aim of the model is to demonstrate how we can have 100% of the load being met by 100% by renewables. So techniques for basically filling load gaps, storage, using electric vehicles, energy efficiency, um, how it impacts the transmission network, and finally some optimization of scenarios. And as I said, any thoughts, feedback is welcome. At the next slide. So send, um, our team leader is Steve Gates, the developer is myself, and the other links are, are the data that we're using. So I'm open to questions. Great, thank you for your presentation, Angus. Um, Great, thank you for your presentation. We will now and open the floor for uh, any questions. Angus, I actually had a question for you. Uh, what is the maximum temporal resolution you can get from the weather file from the NASA 
weather file stuff? Like, is it, are you restricted to the resolution of the It was restricted to. I missed the last word. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, would you, with getting weather files from the NASA data, are you capable of developing sub-hourly weather files, or just what, what what sort of resolution can you get with that? Uh, no, it's it's hourly data. Um, I haven't I haven't looked whether they provided. Um, we're using hourly data, so that's the only level of detail that I've gone. Um, okay, thank you. So I can send you follow up for you. So, Nick DiOrio here at NREL. Um, I was just curious, so you said you're still working on finishing your um, your model, so is it, are you still in development or um, are you already using it for certain cases? And if it's still in development, how long do you think it'll take for you to finish? Alan's a piece of string. Um, developing, um, we developed a model a few years ago with one of the local political parties in terms of how you can meet 100% renewables in the southwest, in the Swiss, by 2029, and we're revisiting that using this simulation to do that. Um, it's probably about 85% complete for what we need. I need to do a bit work, more work on the transmission network. And in terms of storaging, so balancing um, generation with demand by using storage. Um, the other things are, are things like getting the data and the um, the weather data and the um, map tiles is is a bit manual, but it's certainly if somebody was interested, I can certainly um, generate that data for a local area and provide the the um, simulation as it is today. It's a work in progress, but it is available if people are interested. Um, ah, great. Um, develop under um, Linux, but I'm packing Windows. Sorry, missed that. Oh, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So um, if any if people are interested in having a look at it, then I'm certainly you can certainly contact me and we can work out how we can get the data and get the simulation to you. It is mainly because of the size of the weather data files it is quite large. So um, if there's a technique that people can basically get those files themselves, then it just makes it easier for shuffling stuff around a network. I'm certainly interested in other people using it so we can get feedback on what directions we could make it. So is, our initial focus is where we are, but our desire is to see it being potentially anywhere. So therefore, if people anywhere are interested in, in looking at it, then it makes it more chance of developing what requirements other people want. Great, thank you. And on a related note, you mentioned um, storage. The latest version of SAM includes battery modeling for residential and commercial level systems. So, if that um, is a useful feature to you, we might be doing more with utility skill storage in the future. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's where you contact somebody like Steve to say, hey, convince him that the, the old techo is probably more ferreting away down in the bits and bytes, but yes, I, I, have, I have been aware of it, but haven't had a chance to look at it myself just yet. <laughs>